Hi, I'm Caleb at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, and I'm talking today with Professor Michelle Labrosse and his postdoctoral fellow Reza about their work uh, with numerical modeling and biaxial testing uh, with goals towards better heart uh, valve research. Thanks for uh, joining me today, guys. Uh, maybe you could first tell me about what your end goals are. What, what, what's your uh, core research about and what do you hope to accomplish, uh, Professor Gross? All right, so um, well, we would like to make simulations of heart valves better so that we can simulate uh, what's going to happen after surgery uh, for patients with uh, heart valve disease. So to do that, uh, we need really good uh, models, good simulation, good computer models uh, of the valves themselves, of their geometry, but obviously of their material properties as well. And that's really where the cell scale machine comes in. Uh, this machine can help us determine the material properties for uh, younger uh, humans, older humans, and so on, such that we can incorporate that information into our finite element models, those uh, computer models that we use for simulations. Right. I know we've been sort of engaged with you guys for a number of, of months on a collaborative project in better understanding how to do the biaxial testing and what the effect of uh, different configurations are. And Reza, maybe you could just tell us, you've been mostly doing a lot of the, the hands-on work, maybe you could just uh, overall explain the project and, and what you've been doing towards that end. Sure. Um, so obviously for um, sample attachments, uh, there are different methods. Uh, one is uh, using suture and uh, pulleys, and uh, the other one is using clamps. Um, another Another uh, method is using biorex, uh, which is uh, a very fast tool to mount samples patented by uh, cell scale. For this project, we we use a rubber, a rib rubber, so that we can uh, have an isotropic material. Right. Yeah. We took basically yeah. a. A specimen made from an isotropic material, but exactly. made it anisotropic by giving it a ribbed geometry, right? Exactly. And um, and then from there we were doing different types yeah. of attachments. Yeah. Yes. Then then we used uh, bio rakes and then pulleys. Uh, after after that uh, we, uh, we did the image analysis. From that uh, we get the material constants for two known. Uh, hyperelastic models like uh, Sachs models and Luciani's model. So you're doing with, uh, multiple different tests with bio rakes and multiple different tests under different circumstances and different loading, configura di loading configurations and right. patterns um, with, with uh, force balanced uh, sutures and that gave you uh, these two different materials, the constants for these two different material properties. After the experiments we um, we, we have a finite element modeling for for uh, for, the, for different methods for uh, bio rigs, uh, which they have five times, and uh, and pulleys uh, in which we use like uh, uh, four sutures at each side, um, and then we could get the stress and the strain map throughout the uh, the. Sample. Um, so you're basically the doing the the same type of test you did in a physical test. You're doing the same tests in a simulation to exactly. see how that compares to the you know, how those two different uh, approaches compare. And I know uh, Professor Gross, you were trying to look at different uh, types of software and different types of material models to right. make that work. Um, what what's sort of the end goal there? Where would you like to get to with this research? When the time comes to for the transition to surgery. Room, there's still lots of uh, answers that we need to firm up before before our models can be used in, uh, by surgeons. In order to get there, really we need better uh, protocols for experimental testing, and then we'll go back to finite element modeling, and, uh, solid validation of those models before we can move ahead uh, to the, uh, the clinic. Basically, that, that, to me, that's the end goal. And I know you work with a lot of different tools in the lab and have been doing this for many years. Maybe, um, for my information at least, could you tell us how has it been working with the biotester? Um, 
kind of experiences have you had and, and how would you characterize its usefulness for your research? All right, well, it, it's been awesome, actually. I mean, I, I won't lie to you. I was <laughs> waiting for this machine for many years. I tried all sorts of uh, grant proposals that didn't work and so on. So when I finally put, put my hands on it, it was a dream come true. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's been really great. Uh, the amount of customization that you can do, uh, you can control every aspect of what you're doing, that, that's great. And then exporting the data for processing, I mean there's a lot of processing that's already done uh, by the software that's provided, but uh, then you can use MATLAB or whatever you want to process things exactly uh, your way. Uh, it's tremendous, really. And it's for, it works uh, great for all the cardiovascular tissues that we play with. Leaflets, uh, aortic tissues, you name it, uh, it can handle it uh, in a very, very robust fashion. Well, certainly, we're very glad of someone such as yourselves uh, doing this kind of work. And um, I understand you've, you've put a lot of time into some great uh, MATLAB uh, tools that we hope one day will be available to, to the broader community, but we will see. But for the present time, I want to thank you for explaining what you're doing and all the great work you're doing. Thanks very great much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for watching and, and I hope you found this informative. If you have more questions about the CellScale Bio Tester and what we're doing, uh, please contact CellScale uh, and uh, we'd be happy to help you and answer any questions that you have.